how to draw bird of prey in soft pastels as pastel pencils and pan pastels as well if you want to see a really in-depth version it's over on my patreon art channel it's a couple of hours long and there's over one and a half thousand members currently learning from me over there so let's get to it now after i've transferred my drawing with graphite transfer paper what i generally like to do is indicate where the darks and the light areas are going to be this instantly because i'm using a mid-tone paper it helps to create a three-dimensional effect pretty much within just a couple of minutes and then I can concentrate more on the colors at the later stages rather than be concerned where those highlights and shadows are. So that's the effect I got after just a few minutes and you can see I've clearly outlined the major feathers as well. When you've got a subject that's really quite complicated like a bird of prey I like to make it as easy as possible to follow my own lines and I don't want to be worrying and concerned about where all these major feathers are so that's why I've just outlined them there. Now sometimes I then go straight on to something like the eye or the beak whatever's really center of interest more often than not and I do that because I like to get something done that looks quite realistic that inspires me then to keep that realism and detail throughout the rest of the drawing. Here I'm just using pastel pencils for the smaller areas around the eye. They give you that little bit more ability to create small effects and details rather than using something like pan pastels or soft pastel sticks. Here I'm moving on away from the eye and I'm putting in just a little bit of the background. Now that may seem a really strange thing to do. I'm not doing all of the background, just a small amount. So why am I doing that? Well, it really helps me to separate the animal, the subject from the background and that edge helps me also to judge the colors that's next to it and the tonal values as well. So the lights and the darks. I haven't put all the background in because I want a flat color, just a blue over it. And as you can imagine, if I've got even small amounts of pastel dust, not that my technique creates much dust, but that could potentially, or I could put my hand on there or something, I could smudge it and mess it up. Okay, so that's why I only put a small amount of background in. And here you can see, I've started to move from the eye to the next real center of interest, that awesome beak. Now on the beak, there's some really vibrant colors and on this, uh, nose area as well. Now sometimes you'll find those colors in pastel pencils but if you're struggling to find something extremely bright you may not find them in the pans either because remember pans are not completely opaque so if you want a super bright opaque color that's where you start looking for pastel sticks. That's the real powerhouse of the pastel world. Here I want to show myself using pan pastels bottom right I've got just a regular printer paper, just the cheapest you can find. I'm using that as a mixing palette. You can see my pans itself, bottom left hand corner, and that funny strip of paper with all different colors on there. That's where I've been testing my colors before I actually put them on the um, pastel matte paper, the real drawing itself. Now pans, they really come into their own when you're doing underlayers. By the very nature of pans, the tool themselves adds a little bit of sponge on the tip and that's pushing the pastel down into the pastel matte paper surface. It means I can get lots of layers on top of it. Now don't forget, you can also do the same technique using pastel sticks. So you can put your sticks down onto the uh, bird in this case and then use the pan pastel tool to actually perform the very same thing and blend that into the surface. Now with the pan pastel underlayer then I can think about adding more darks and also the lights on top and taking each individual feather one at a time and really studying each one if you want lots and lots of detail in it. It really doesn't take as long as you might think. Pastels with my techniques my drawings this size generally take around about 
eight to ten hours and I do that over probably three or four sessions so it's not too bad at all it's really quite fast. It's not that often I find myself needing a really flat one color background but in this instance I didn't want any distractions at all and that's where pastel sticks really come into their own. If you want a flat color don't reach for pan pastels they're great if you want you know variances in a color for a background they've certainly got their place but when you want a flat background absolutely pastel sticks is the best they save you a lot of money if you're trying to do it with your pencils and of course because they're super opaque look at this light blue is covering up the brown pastel matte paper as I'm putting in a few final details of this drawing, I know it's a very short video, but I hope you've picked up some techniques and tips perhaps on it. And at the very end, I'd love to show you the incredible improvement some of my Patreon Art Channel members have made. I'm really proud of what they've been able to do, and I think you'll be shocked at the improvement they've made.